that we can gather in your presence. Thank you that you are here by your Holy Spirit to reveal to us kingdom truths, Lord, that we may become glorious kingdom subjects, Lord, revealing the glory of the King. So, Lord, today we thank you. Thank you, Lord, that through the ministry of your Word, the ministry of your Spirit, once again you'll come to water the lamb, you will tend to the sheep, you will, you will nourish our hearts, Lord, and you will raise us up unto your delightsome plans for our life. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you in advance for all that you're going to do in this precious moment that we can have here gathered in your name. We give you glory and praise in Jesus' wonderful name. And everyone say, Amen. 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 I'm still on the uh, series on the kingdom. There's really so much that God is wanting to update the body of Christ right now about the kingdom. I hope you catch that drift and the urgency with me, the weight of it. God is in this hour crashing in with the kingdom, for sure. I mean, if you look at what is happening around the world right now, the Bible says, once again, he, he says, I will shake the world. I will shake the earth. I will shake the heavens. Once again, I will shake because I will, I will cause that which is not of me to crumble. And only that which is of my kingdom will not be shaken. He is, he's coming in with His kingdom glory in a great way. And so this is the hour where the very, very, a very pertinent message is, is the kingdom of God. How it looks like what it is. How does it function? What is our role in it? How is God the king? You know, and, and what, does, what does yielding to the kingship look like? I really, really believe this is a major, major end time truth, a restoration truth, before the return of the Son. Because Jesus said the gospel of this kingdom, this gospel of the kingdom, will be preached throughout the world. And then the end will come. So it's very, very clear that, you know, Jesus Himself says that, that it's something that He's going to reveal to the world in a whole new way and the truth be restored to His body before He comes back for us. So we have been taking this journey together to examine what is the kingdom, what is the kingdom? God is the king of the universe, you know, and, and, and it is under His reign and rule that men and creation thrive and flourish. Amen? Fallen man is restored as, as he submits to God's reign over him as well as through him over creation. We covered a lot of ground in you know, the last, what, four or five sessions now, you know, and we realize that Jesus has come with the divine mandate to restore God's kingdom amongst men. That's why Jesus' core message is repent. Align your heart and mind and thinking to the fact that the kingdom of God is here. That was Jesus' primary message, core message in His, in his, three, in his 33 years on earth and three years of His ministry. That was His primary message. The kingdom is here. The kingdom is here. And before he left, he said this again. He reinforced it again to say, this good news about God's kingdom, God's dominion, God's kingdom, the king's dominion in, in, among men will be fully preached to the, to the rest of the world and then the end will come. The end of this dispensation that he will come back for us. So we, we know that it is a vital message. And so to this afternoon, once again, I want to ask of us to be, to be open in our hearts to what God is wanting to talk to you because you have a role in this kingdom. Amen. Every one of us have a very unique role in this kingdom and you are really here for such a time as this. You are born at this time. You are, give, you are given very special gifting, anointing, talents, calling upon your life unique to what God has, has for you in His destiny for your life. And, and it's a very unique role and function in this kingdom. Jesus came to restore this kingdom that we might come to know that we are part of this kingdom. Jesus did not come to bring another religion. In fact, if anything, He came to deliver us from religion. He came to establish a domain, a very unique realm. Uh, it's called the kingdom of God. He came to establish a, a unique country. All right, just help us grasp it more. A unique country that is called the kingdom of God. One in which He is the king. His law, the law of Christ, is the constitution. And those who would believe and abide in Him are His kingdom subjects. And very important for us to, real, to, 
to know and to realize today, you know, is that the instrument of his government over this kingdom, the instrument of his government is the ecclesia, the church. That's why it's important for us to realize what he's doing, and, and then you will not fear because the world is going through and it's going to go through a, a more and more uh, uh, troubling, worrying, scary turbulence that is, that is it's going to be stormy beyond what man has ever seen because Jesus himself says there's nothing like it before and, and nothing, nothing like it after. We are, going to, we are now hurtling into a, 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 a season where the Bible says it's going to be great shaking, it's going to be the kind of turbulence on a global scale like like the world has never seen, nor will we see ever again. This is the peak of it that we are heading into. And, and Jesus said, do not worry. No, if you know what I'm doing and that my kingdom cannot be shaken, you will realize also that my kingdom is the only valid and viable shelter for you. Amen? That's why we are wanting to, to be... Uh, uh, to unravel this mystery called the kingdom. And I realize that the more we understand the kingdom, the more we realize the mysteries. The, Jesus spoke much about the mysteries of the kingdom, which I'll cover in the next session. The, the more you understand the kingdom, the more you can really connect all the dots that is happening around the world. That, is, that can be very deluding, very bizarre, you know, very scary. But not when you understand the kingdom and realize what is happening in the kingdom because the mystery surrounds the kingdom. It's a secret kingdom. And the mysteries of the kingdom is not just given to anyone and everyone. You know, it's given to those who are yielded to the kingship of Christ. Amen? I mean, just like you know, in our country, there are all kinds of secrets in, in, the, in the high places. You know, state secret. State secret is not shared with just anybody. But people who are in the you know who are yielded to, to the authority of our state, you know, and who are found trustable, who are found trustable, you know, and they are the ones that understand the, the who, who are given stewardship of state secret, you know, in the function that we, we have in this state. Likewise, in the kingdom, you will find that the more you understand the kingdom and the more you're made trustable, you know, God releases the mysteries of the kingdom to you so that you can play your unique role in such a time as this. Okay, I, I'm not, I don't want to jump ahead of myself. This is for the next session. You know, that's why, you know, the, the more we understand the, about the kingdom, the more we can make sense of everything that's happening around us, you know, that, are very practic that has very practical implication, even with the, with the whole economic uh, 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 trend and turbulence, uh, uh, what seemed like a political anarchy and... and, and, and uh, uprising and all, everything will make sense to you when you understand what is happening in the kingdom. Jesus did prophesy in uh, Matthew 24, 14. He says the gospel of, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations and then the end will come. So it is not just about preaching it. You can see that, that what Jesus is saying is that not only we talk about it, we preach it, we tell people, do you know about the kingdom? Do you know there's a very real realm and country called the kingdom of God that is being established in the world? We are not only to talk about it, we are to make it a, our testimony. That means we actually also live it. We are witnesses. Some other version uh, uh, interpreted as uh, translated it as shall be preached in all the world as a witness. So we are to be the witness. We are not only talk about it, we live it for you to see that this is, this is how it looks like. We, we live, not only we preach about it, we live and demonstrate it as our testimony to the nations according to what Jesus says, to the nations, you know, so that many others may also come to know about the reality of the kingdom of God and would also want to be reconciled with the king whom they will realize is really their father and their creator. So in this hour, this is our the big, big role of the church, you know, to tell of the kingdom, to live the kingdom in such a way that the world may come to know him as their king too. And this, all this shall precede the return of our Lord Jesus, uh, according to, and uh, he says, and then the end will come. So in this uh, session today, I'm going to quickly zoom in on, on how do we go about, I want to give us a picture of how it looks like. If God's kingdom, that means the dominion of the king, the reign of the king, is to be established in human society through his people, the ecclesia, we are His instrument of government for His authority to be extended, for His influence to come over humankind. 
how does it look like? All right, how does it look like? I want to introduce to us uh, uh, the spheres that we will extend the influence, that we are supposed to extend the influence. All right, I'm going to call it seven mountains of influence. Some people call it the seven gates. Some people call it the seven spheres, you know, but... But I would call it seven mountains for, for reason that the Bible says mountains. All right, I want to show us that w- what is the seven mountains of influence. All right, first of all, let us read the scripture. All right, Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 says, again, it's in the context of the last days. It says, In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will be established where? At the top of the mountains and will be raised among above the hills hills. All nations were streamed to it. Now, if you study the context of Isaiah, you know it's about the end times, a a lot of these scriptures about Jesus coming to establish God's kingdom on earth. So, what is the meaning of mountain? Mountain symbolizes the place of government, authority, and influence. Now, it's going to be very relevant in a while. Some may look a bit lost right now. You know, no, I'm not talking about Mount Faber. I'm not talking about Bukit Tima. You know, I'm not talking about, even about Mount Everest. But mountain here represents the place, represents a place of government, authority, influence the, the, that, that is over a, that realm or the people in that region. So the scripture tells us that in the last days, God's government, God's authority and influence will be. On at the established at the top of the mountains. So the mountains refer to the, the spheres of government influence that is over human societies. And this is where the church needs to rise up to her calling to, to be God's instrument of government on top of all these mountains. So, so why seven, uh, a couple of years back, you know, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, 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 Lauren Cunningham and uh, Bill Bright, you know, separately uh, uh, heard the Lord, men of God who heard the Lord about seven spheres of influence over society that Christians need to be aware that that is where we are, we are to exert the influence of our King and exercise the authority of His kingdom over this seven sphere. Why? Because these are the spheres of influence of society that shape the way we live and think. It is what are they? Let's take a look at it. So they, they actually heard from the, from the Lord simultaneously, you know, uh, uh, and, and, they, and they called one another and they were so amazed that they heard the same thing, the same seven sphere that God said, this is our, my, king, my kingdom reign, rule and influence must come into this area. All right, must come into this area that shape a society. All right, let's look at the seven mountains. Seven mountains of influence. One, family. God wants his, his reign and rule to come into the household, into the family. Do you all agree? Yeah. But this is not the only one. Second is the church or religion, the religion mountain. All right. Uh, then education. But the way the enemy knows exactly what he's after. And far too long we have left him, you know, to reign over all these spheres of influence in a, in a society. In over education, government and politics, business, science and technology, media and communications, arts and entertainment. And boy, has he been effective in, in extending his, his defiling influence over all these spheres and that completely could shape a society. Uh, just look at America, f- for example. You know, a nation founded on, on very strongly founded on Christian principles and, and, and liberty. And look at the whole change that have taken place such, so, in such a dramatic way because the seven mountains have been invaded by certain very ungodly forces all right? and the people of God have abdicated and absconded from their place of influence. So this is the hour that God is really awakening His people to, to the fact that kingdom-oriented people must occupy these mountains of influence in order for the, tr- for, for the transformation of society to take place. All right? Uh, we are anointed and gifted by God to be salt and light in these spheres. Today, I'm going to talk about this and then we'll continue in the next session. How do we do that? How do we bring the kingdom value and culture to be into these seven very important realms of influence in our society? How do we do that? 
Okay, how do we do that? Okay, I'm glad you asked. All right. <laughs> Through servanthood. Everybody say servanthood. servanthood. The dominion of our Lord Jesus is manifested whenever the people of God go forth to serve. Amen? And by doing that, we bring the order and the blessing of His world into whichever sphere that we are serving with a servant heart. We are serving with, with the grace of God upon our life. Amen? When believers simply, uh, we, we cannot sim- we, I'm, I'm not selling it the idea here that we simply want to go in and take the position of leadership so that we can influence. It does not work that way. The kingdom way is to love people into the kingdom. The kingdom way is to serve. Servanthood is what breeds the authority to rule. Amen. I, I like one, one uh, statement that uh, Bill Johnson said, which I thought was so beautiful. He says, we are, do you know that we are called to reign, to rule with the heart of a servant and then to serve with the heart of a king? Wow, so beautiful. Huh? <laughs> it's true. You know, we are called to serve. If we rule by being servants. It is through service that we bring the benefits of God's world within the reach of the common man and impact them with the culture of heaven. Today's session, if you really catch it to heart, it will really change the way you see your, your workplace, your school, whatever sphere of influence that God has positioned in you in right now. Because the kingdom is to be expressed through you in love and servanthood. That's how Jesus is displayed in the realm that you are in. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. And, and once you catch this, I tell you there's going to be such a kingdom momentum that will kick in uh, where you are serving. Kingdom ideas, creativity, anointing, wisdom, resources, everything will come in to back you up when you are ready and ready to be able to display the king wherever you are serving right now, whether you're a policeman, a doctor, an administrator, bookkeeper, salesman, businessman, you know, it, you've got to catch this message because God has sent you there. God has sent you there. No, we are to be in every, every level and layer of society. That's why the Bible describes the kingdom, uh, liken the kingdom to be like leaven. You know, leaven, uh, the yeast, you know, we, we, we place the yeast in the dough. We make sure we really mix it, right? I mean, you know, we really mix it so that it can affect the whole lump. The whole lump will rise when we bake it, you know. Likewise, the Bible says the kingdom of heaven is like leaven. Okay, let's examine this scripture together. Matthew chapter 13, verse 33. He told them still another parable, that's Jesus speaking, the kingdom of heaven, he's talking about the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. So God is wanting to take you and mix you into the world, you know, into every realm and in, 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 in society, in society, so that you can be His effect in that area. All the geese cannot be just gathered in the church building. And then the world will be unimpacted by the kingdom. They cannot feel the effect of the kingdom. And the effect comes through our servanthood. Can I hear an amen? And then, just a yeast has effect on the dough it is worked into, so we will transform all the kingdoms of the world as we are worked into the systems. And then from those positions of service, we begin to display His, His, His character, His rule, His reign, His dominion. That is the game plan. So as the people of God move into the different realms of society to show forth the benefits and values of the kingdom, his government is being felt. His government is being expanded throughout human society. So in, in those positions, every believer then is in full-time ministry. Amen? Just as a pastor is over the church, just as a, a fisherman is to fish, you know, we are just all as full-time in, in, in wherever position that God has placed us to be His kingdom yeast. His kingdom effect in that area. Amen? So all of us here, the overwhelming majority of us here, we are not in a ministry, so to say, in you know, church ministry. But you know what? Your pulpit is your company, your office desk, you know, your, your, your salesman presentation file. Wherever you are, that's your, your pulpit is basically your area of expertise and favor in the world system right now that God has put you in. 
So I want you to be able to see that this afternoon, God wants you to be able to see that. What is your pulpit? For some of, some of you, you know, your sermon is the art that you are, you are designing right now. For some of you, your sermon is your copywriting. For some of you, your sermon is, is, is a beautiful surgery that you could, you could bring about on someone in a the theatre. You know, you must realise your pulpit and you preach God's good news in, in whichever sphere that you are in with your lifestyle, not just your words. That's why it's just not, just not just preach, but it must be a testimony. Lift out an example, a witness. Amen? And God is now teaching His people right now in, in, in an unprecedented way. He's teaching His people how to invade a culture for its total and complete transformation before the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the, the hour and this is the message for the body of Christ in a, in a, in a global way. Or if you care to, to search and hear what is happening around the world. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 15, it says, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord. God fully intends for there to be a fulfillment of, of His word, which is the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord. So every mountain must become God's mountain. God's mountain must be on top of every mountain. And God can only do that through you. Everybody say me. Yeah, I want you to take ownership of this. Because going forward, God is wanting to speak to us how to take the mountains. Whether you, you know, uh, whatever industry that you're in, whichever sphere of influence, you're an artist, you're an actor, you're a, you're a student, you're a teacher, you're a principal, no matter what you're doing, God wants you to know that He has an intention to influence your sphere with His kingdom culture, that the glory of the King may be revealed. And, and when you will, in your, if you are willing to, in your sphere, do it God's way, it's going to be a superior way to whatever is happening around you because the kingdom is far superior to the earth. Uh, recently when I, 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 I met... Um, Okay, I don't want to jump ahead on myself. I'll leave that for next session. It's a tremendous thing that's taking place in the kingdom. The invention, the technology that's already been given to Christian scientists right now, just mark my words, it's going to, it's going to blow the minds of the world. I've heard of some of these things that's in the hand of Christian scientists. It's far superior to what, what we know of today. We, we think we got the latest when we can do this, we could do that. And, and, and what I recently met with a man of God who is working among the scientists, you know, and he tells me what is in the hand of the Christian. And he said, you know what? The crazy thing is this, to the world it's going to be crazy. It's going to be given free to the world. It was so stun the world because, you know, it, we always want to patent it, you know, uh, to make money out of it and all that. He said, no, God has given so many tremendous invention to His people and they're waiting on Him on what's the right time to release to the world, to reveal God's heart, to reveal, to reveal God's generosity. The solution for humankind comes from the throne room. You know, the invention, the technology, and He told me some which I thought, well, wow, you know, really easy and they're not going to patent it, it's going to be given to the world, you know. And it's, it's, that's the kingdom for you, you know. God's going to, God is wanting to reveal His kingdom and His glory through you in your unique function wherever you are right now, in whichever mountain you are now operating on, all right. So talking about, so I'm going to talk about taking the mountain, all right. I want you to stay with me. All right, and we'll do this over two or three sessions. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. But the Word of God says, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Now, we as God's people, as His kingdom subjects, we are to be the light of the world. Do you agree? We are to illuminate and reveal God's kingdom truths and ways to the world. That is our role. We are to displace darkness with light, evil with righteousness, sickness with cures, perversion with holiness. We are to reveal God's version, His kingdom version of everything that has been defiled here on earth. That's our role. In Matthew chapter 5, Verse 16, it says, Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Can everybody say with me, in such a way. 
Don't just shine. It's called gong gong shine. You know, shine in such a way. In such a way it means there's an intentionality involved. In such a way that God's glory may be revealed through you. Don't just shine. Shine in such a way that it may glorify your Father in heaven. Don't just shine. Shine effectively. I want you to think about this. This is a very simple statement, but it has profound impact on how you approach work tomorrow when you go back. Shine in such a way that God can be revealed through you. That means don't just work hard. Work smart, right? People say, you know, and God said, don't just shine. Shine with intentionality that God can be revealed through you. So I want you, just this is enough for you to pray to, to pray much about. Go back to nine and say, God, in what way I can shine intentionally? I, I, can op- I can operate in this industry, in this craft, in this profession, in such a way people around me can see your glory in me, can see your wisdom upon me, can see your, your love and compassion in, in what I do and say and represent. You know. God said, do that in such a way. All right, so with this understanding, now let us consider then what is the most effective way to transform a culture. The Bible does reveal to us the, the, the ways, you know, how to transform, the most effective way to transform a culture to match the culture of heaven, wherein, wherein human lives can thrive and civilizations flourish because God has a superior way. It's called heaven's way. And He's wanting to express that through you in such a practical way on earth that people will know, wow, wow, God is real. And I want, I want to come under His reign and rule. I want to live in His domain. His domain belongs to those who are willing to yield to His Lordship. Amen? Amen. So we, we need to understand that the seven mountains of influence, what they are, and so that we can be strategic, strategic to invade those mountains in establishing God's kingdom culture in human societies. All right, so I want to explain that in a clear statement here so you won't miss. Mountains refer to the various domains and kingdoms over which there are kings. People who rule over each sphere. Kings refer to the people who rule over each sphere as modern-day kings. And they are usually the ideological strongholds that collectively shape the culture and establish the spiritual climates of each nation. I thank God in many ways, you know, even though we are a little nation, but we have very godly values held by people who are these mountain kings. So today I'm going to teach you how to be a holy Mao San Wang, <laughs> uh, a holy mountain king. Yeah, yeah, you know, because they determine the culture of the realm that they have influence over. What our leaders would embrace as their values, you know what determines the culture of our society. Don't you think so? That's why we need to pray for our leaders. We need to pray for our leaders. Now, but right now, upon this subject, upon this subject, I want to, to share two effective ways how we can occupy the mountains. Two effective ways. Are you all ready? Because God is... He's looking to you and us to be the mountain kings, all right? First, how do we influence the mountains? Like, for example, whoever is over our arts and entertainment can decide a lot what is allowed in our land. They are the mountain kings. So how do we occupy that mountain? Number one, get them saved. <laughs> Pray for them. Get them saved. Get them transformed by kingdom truths. Really, really, whatever sphere you are in right now, you know, uh, 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 many of us may not, some of us are, but many of us will not be the mountain kings ourselves, so to say, you know. But the fact that you are there, you have a kingdom role. You are to pray for your leaders, pray for your boss, pray for your company uh, 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 CEO, whatever, you know, pray Pray for the people above you whom you know are the ones that set the policy, set the culture. Pray for their salvation. That's the immediate way. Pray for their salvation. Reach out to them. You know, and pray for God to to be able, for God to open the doors, the windows for you to be able to speak into their life. Influence them for the kingdom. That's number one way. How we occupy the mountain. Second way is go in and be the mountain king. Lord, let me it, let me be able, Lord, to come into that place to be able to set kingdom culture in this, in this sphere. Some of us are called for that. You need to be true to that because there are people who are called to influence a mountain king like Joseph, 
like Daniel, they themselves are not the mountain king. But there are those who are called to be mountain king. David, Solomon, you know, so, so they are to be the king. So you must be awakened to your role. What is your role? And we all have a specific role. All right. So a, a side note, I want to make a side note about this. 2 Corinthians 10.4 tells us, we use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. That's what we come against in our, in our mountains. In your mountains, you've got to know what is demonic, is, is, is reasoning, human reasoning. These are the strongholds, false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. That is our role. Whatever mountain that we are, you know, we are to, we are to take down the enemy's strongholds. And what are the strongholds? Perverse thinking, false reasoning, rebellious thoughts, human reasoning. But says all this, we capture them. How? By teaching them to to understand the king and the king's way, to teach them to obey Christ. We transform mountains, how? By transforming minds and lives of the kings over the mountains. You've got to be strategic about that. And today, God wants to awaken you to the fact that you must influence the kings. You must. You must influence the kings because the enemy already knows it and have brought so many perverted uh, 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 forces and people into those places to cause his perversion to pervade a whole generation, a whole sphere, a whole society. And God's people must be awakened to that. The Bible talks about it. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, I will build my church, Jesus says, and the gates of Hades or hell will, will not overpower it. How do we invade the, those spheres? How do we invade those fears? By understanding that we bring God's government there. Actually, the word ecclesia is also about of government, you know, the group that governs, you know. That's why I say the ecclesia is God's instrument of government, all right? We are to bring God's government there, God's rule and reign and influence there. And then the gates of Hades were not overpowered. Gates is the place of authority. You know, in the, in, the, in the olden days, in biblical days, in the Old Testament especially, the city gate is where they, they pass judgment. The city elders sit there to rule over court cases, so to say. You know, that's where authority is being exercised. You see? So, look, how, how, do, we, how do we cause the gates of Hades Hades not to be able to overpower us. We bring God's government there. We build our church there, so to say. What is it? How, how do we do that? Discipleship. Discipleship. We influence the hearts and minds of people in those, in, especially in those positions. All right, Matthew 28, verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and, and, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So how do we disciple? How do we disciple the nations? It's in two basic approach. It goes on to say in verse 20, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. How is discipleship carried out? Can someone say, tell me. How do we make disciples? How do we make disciples on the mountains, in, in your industry, in your office? It says that there, I want to highlight you, because oftentimes I find that many people when we uh, um, quote this verse regarding making disciples of the nation, I often heard it this way. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nation, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. I myself have made that mistake for years. Somehow I just skip over the baptiz baptizing them, you know, until in recent times, I think it was last year when the Lord uh, opened my eyes to it. No, no, don't skip that bit about baptism. But what it means, is, because baptism means baptizo, immersion. Immerse them into the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Relationship. Bring them first into the family of the Trinity. It's, it's, it's immersing them into the relationship. It's relationship. Everybody say relationship. Discipleship is actually first relationship. Without a relationship, you don't have the, the bridge to be able to teach, to communicate. So it's relationship and then it is teaching, sharing kingdom truths. So wherever you are working right now, let me paraphrase and summarize so we won't miss the key point. You know, you must be intentional about this. How can I build relationship? 
especially with the most key person, in such a way the kingdom truths can be communicated. That is how they are being discipled. That's how the, king, the, the kingdom's truth can be heard in the heart of these people and it will transform the culture of the whole organization, whether it be a hospital or a business enterprise or a, a, a fraternity, an art fraternity, whatever. You know, we are to be mindful of this. We bring them into relationship with the Father. We share, we teach of kingdom truths for them to understand the kingdom ways. Amen? That is something only you can do, but I can't. I'm equipping the same for the work of the ministry. You do this in the university, you do this in the school, you know, you are to bring kingdom effect that way. Disciple the nations. Can I hear an amen? And, and let's look at Acts. When it says, it says here, okay, look at that. Look at that. And make disciples, this is interesting, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them. Can I know who is them referring to? I want to give you the example of Paul. Very specifically, God, God told Paul who to baptize, who to bring the gospel of the kingdom to. All right, look at Acts chapter 9, verse 15. But the Lord said, Go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles. All right, so not just only to the Jew, also to the Gentiles and to kings as well as to the people of Israel. So, so I, I, I want us to consider this. Besides Jews and Gentiles, God actually specifically highlighted to Paul, you must reach the kings. The kings, you must reach them. All of us can reach the kings. Your prayer already is reaching the kings. You know, if you can begin with that, to pray for them. That's why we pray for the leaders of the land. We pray for our employer. We, we pray. The Bible teaches us to do that. So who are these kings? Who are today's modern day kings? The ones who occupy the, the, oh, the Mao San Wang. <laughs> the ones who occupy and rule the high places. Yes, the spheres of influence over those seven uh, 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 mountains we saw just now, they determine the culture of a whole society. They are the ones who write the songs that you're singing and humming on the way to church today. The movies that you watch, they are the kings. They tell you what's in fashion, what's not to wear, hey, this one lao go, this one passe. You know, they are the ones that, that shape your taste. They design your iPhones, they tell you which app is the latest you know, that you need, you simply need, you can't live without. You know, they craft the legislation and the law that you live by. They send your sons to war. These are the kings. And God say, be strategic about that. Pray for them. Let kingdom reign and rule you know, be able to come upon their life. Then, then blessings will come upon that sphere that they are over. Amen. These are the ones, the kings who occupy the seven mountains. They are simply the ones with the significant, significant sphere of authority. I wonder how many students here, if you are here with me today, you actually pray for your principles. Do you know you're supposed to do that? You're supposed to pray for your principles. Uh, if you want to live out this message, every employee here, you're supposed to pray for your employer and then pray for the, the industry leader of your industry. Be specific about it. Pray for the CEO of your MNC. Pray. These mountain kings, they, 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 they may not be virtuous, but they do have to be competent or they won't last long because all these kings, uh, they know that other kings are willing to take over their mountains. So that's why, you know, there's all this politics and fighting and, you know, yeah. Because oftentimes the summit is the most happening place. It's a place of such intense rivalry, competitions, fights, battles. In whatever industry you're in, you know there's a lot of, you know, right, I mean, politics and manipulation and all that because kings fight to reign. And that breed all kinds of strain and strive and, and fear and suspicion, politics and maneuvers. Every mountain has that, especially nearer to the summit because there are others wanting to take over as king. Why, why do I highlight this? Because we must, be we must be deliberate to bring the kingdom there. When you bring the kingdom there, the atmosphere will change from one of infighting and backstabbing and, 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 and politics and maneuver. We bring the kingdom there. How does the kingdom look like? 
Romans 14, 17, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Do you know where, where you actually would exert influence? This would be the atmosphere. The kingdom's atmosphere will take over. It's one of righteousness. That means the, 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 the shenanigans, the, the, the scams will be exposed. The, the unrighteous things will be brought to light. Wherever you are, when you, when you do exert kingdom influence, you do pray over your sphere, pray over, over your, your boss, pray over your office, pray over your colleagues, pray for your colleagues. Do you know this, this is the outcome? Righteousness will prevail in your workplace. Peace will reign. Isn't that wonderful? And there's joy. There's joy. I, 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 I'm so glad to hear uh, just uh, two nights ago at our huddle, you know, Brother Jacob was sharing about, about praying over the office. Go early just to pray over the office. Pray over the, the, the workplace and see things change and see how people become so open to the gospel and will come to him to, to ask for advice and counsel. That is the effect of the kingdom. If you actually are deliberate and intentional about it, you do it and you see. A doctor's too. You see, you see how many get, get healed gets in, in, in your theatre more than any other places. If you just bring the kingdom there, there's righteousness, there is peace, there is joy that will reign in the sphere that you actually exert kingdom influence. Can I hear amen? That's how we bring blessing, the blessing of the kingdom wherever we are. But, but today's message is we need to know where, who, and be deliberate. And I, want, I will let you discuss this at the, at the live group, you know, and how we can do that. It, it says, just now we, we, we read that, you know, we need to bring down the stronghold because the stronghold are in the high places. The summit is a high place. It, means the, the, it describes a sphere of influences where kings position themselves. And so oftentimes, they themselves become the specific target and habitation of darkness. The devil knows, you know. So the devil has been wanting to, to bring his evil into the education sphere, right to the top, you know. And, and well, in the U.S. right now, I mean, legislation is still good. They're fighting to put it in now that any kid can go to any toilets, depending on how they feel like. I mean, would you feel safe if your girl's toilet can, any boy that feel like a girl can walk in? Yeah. And they're fighting that right now. I mean, the legislation came forth, but they're fighting it right now. Somebody up there is taking instruction from the evil one to defile this sector. You know, this is just one of the many, many examples. Many, many examples. These are the high places where the influence is being exerted from and the enemy knows you control that, you control that sphere. So in Ephesians, the Word of God tells us in chapter 6, verse 6, 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, we're not fighting people, friends, we are not. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness in high places. What are these high places? It includes the summits of every mountain. It is where spiritual warfare is intense. And I want us to, to become aware of. And that's how Satan sought to control the world, by controlling these strategic grounds how? By controlling the leaders, the rulers over these, these mountains, over these spheres of influence, you know. So you can see, you, you can see that. That's why the people in, in the summit are often, uh, from my own experience and observation, people high up, they are all very spiritual. I just recently heard about, uh, I, I'll be very careful with this, let's say the this huge, huge organization has the most, most capital fund to, to invest and all that in our land. And the CEO, very overt occult practice uh, practitioner. Uh, a, a friend who is a consultant, you know, walked into the office and was shocked, you know, the, the, eye, the seeing eye, the, the, the all kinds of things and the occult art, uh, uh, paraphernalia. People on the mountain top, so to say, are often very spiritual because it's such intense warfare over their minds, over their hearts. I personally have observed the richest people I've met are the most superstitious. They may not admit it, but they're very superstitious because there are forces influencing them and wanting to influence through them. And it's scriptural. 
Satan showed Jesus the, the glory of all the kingdoms of the world and said, I can give them to you, you know. That means he's in control. Look at this in Luke chapter 4, verse 6. And the devil said to Jesus, this is referring to Jesus, all this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me. He didn't create them. It's been handed to him. By who? By men. Over those spheres. It's been delivered to me and I give it to whomever I wish. How? Mountain kings who will incredible influence and power, you know, they handed it they, to him and they take instruction from him. Oh, just these two days, just these two days, you know about South Korea? The president actually takes instruction from a shaman, uh, from an occult leader, a shaman, you know, and, and the shaman did even decide some of the cabinet polls, policy, incredible. That is what, oh, I just thought of that. That is exact, exact uh, uh, play out of this, this scripture. The enemy knows that that is the place you go to if you want to subject a whole realm and a whole group of people to your influence. You go after the kings. And right now, it's being exposed. You know, the people say, how could you take instruction from a shaman? You know, uh, amazing. And be, so today, we need to know that this is very real. This war for the hearts of men is very real. And all these mountain kings, they need to hear the gospel. You need to pray. When Jesus sent His disciples out as sheep, He gave them this instruction. Matthew 10, 16, Behold, I send you out as sheep. In the midst of wolves, what is that for? To reach out to the wolves and especially the alpha male. It's, please be strategic about this. This is the, the, the gist of the message today. Reach out to the wolves. And while you're at it, Jesus says, go for the alpha male. You understand? To whom in this wolf pack do you go to? I'll show you. Matthew 10, 11. This is, this is Matthew 10, right? I show you 10, 11. Now, whatever city or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy and stay there till you go out. That person that is of worth and influence. Strategy. The gospel of the kingdom is a proclamation to the influential mountain kings. There's another king. There's a greater king, a good king. And his name is Jesus. That's our message to the mountain king. He is the king of kings. Jesus is the Lord of lords. He's a judge of all men. He's a king who has given himself to his subject in love. He's the king who has sacrificed his own life for the redemption of his people. That's our message to the mountain king. There's a greater king. And you'll be blessed to come to know him and be saved. Amen. We are the bearer of this good news. This is called the good news of the kingdom, which Jesus said it must be preached to the whole world. Then the end will come. And now today we receive a, a clearer mandate to the whole world, especially who? The kings, the one that is of worth, the one that will influence many, many people. God said, especially that person, pray for that person. Bring the kingdom to that person. Let that person be saved and be blessed. And through him, the whole people in his realm will be blessed. Amen. The mountain kings need to know that the king of kings wants to save them and want to deliver them from the bondage of the powers of spiritual wickedness. Hallelujah. And not to let the enemy use them. The enemy want to use them to feed on the chaos and control <clears throat> and, and, the exercise to, and to exercise control through them over their domain. That's what the enemy wants to do. But when they tell them, when they do bow to the king of kings, that's when they have real authority. They, that's when they can truly be good kings themselves. We need to share with them. And to reveal the out, they, then they can also reveal the ultimate glory of the one who created them. Amen. Who created them is Jesus, the one who created them. And that is the glory in the seven mountains of cultures because God is the creator. He's the source of the glory, not the devil. When they reveal the king's glory, that's when that's a, that's a true glory that God intended. Luke chapter 4, verse 5. Let's come back to, to 4. There's a glory, you know, on every mountain. In the arts, in science, in medicine, every, in every realm. There's the glory of God there because the, the Creator is God, not man. Luke 4, 
Verse 5 says, Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. These are the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you and their glory. For this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. All the mountains have glory because they were created by God in the first place. It's the devil that has stolen it. The devil, the devil that has perversed it and used it for means that actually harms men. And God's, God wants you to know that the king of glory wants you to take back those realms. They are not created by the devil, but were delivered to him, as I mentioned just now. The kingdoms were made for humanity. And that's why humanity possesses a capacity to reveal the glory of the one who called us into being. I, I've said this actually many times before, right? That we all are indwelt by God. Christ in you is the hope of glory. There's the glory of God in you. And, and God wants to reveal that glory of His through you over every sphere, especially at the summit. Now you understand why, you know, there's a glory that needs to be revealed to the world for the world to see the glory of our King Jesus. Can I hear an amen for that? I mean, we want to reveal King, the, the glory of King Jesus to the world around us. And at the end, there will be such a, you know what, God will have His way. Now He's just looking for people that will work with Him to bring that to pass. But whether you work with Him or not, He will bring it to pass. That I know. Because the Bible already tells me the outcome at the end. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as of the of the Lord as the water covers the sea. On all, all my holy mountain. At the end there will be a complete takeover of all the mountains by God when he is known by all. The knowledge of the knowledge of the Lord will be full of the knowledge of the Lord. You see, the knowledge of God comes through us. We, you, you need to share it. You know, and when, as people come from every sphere, especially the mountain king, that mountain becomes God's mountain. And at the end, it will be all my holy mountain. He will do it. Now we are just extended. We are being extended the royal invitation. Would you let me use you to bring this about? What a privilege. He will, he's going he's gonna to do it anyway, with or without you. But right now, we, we received the privilege and the honour that we can be part of this. We can, we can review the knowledge of the Lord and cause all, every mountain to ultimately become God's holy mountain. Amen? We, as His beloved children, are to rule as kings over the earth, thereby revealing the glory of, of the King of kings. And remember how we rule? With the heart of a servant. We serve our way into their hearts. Amen? That's the kingdom way. That's the Jesus way. Amen? There are those of us here, you know you're called to impact kings. Kings and gatekeepers. And sometimes we use the word gatekeepers. They are the one that keep, they are the gatekeepers. Without them, you can't access their realm. You see, they are the one with the influence. There are many of us here, we are called to impact these gatekeepers. There are many of us who are called to be the gatekeepers. I don't know. Most direct one I can think of would be the censorship, <laughs> the censorship board. You know, if you're invited, please, please, please say yes you know, to be on the board. And then when you're on the board, please, please don't fall. <laughs> don't, in, the, <laughs> in wanting to do the censorship, you know, <laughs> you go the way of the enemy, you know, right? But, but please, some of you are called to impact the gatekeepers. Some of you are to be the gatekeepers. Favor, wisdom be upon you. God's anointing be upon you. I'm going to pray for you, you know, towards this end of this message that, that God will put you in the right place, that which you are anointed to be. You know, some, I, many times over the years, I'm, as a pastor, I've spoken with, uh, you know, interacted with many Christians. Oftentimes, every now and then I come across, every now and then I come across a Christian who has been given the sphere and they actually didn't want it. No, I don't want. Oh, I'm, uh, I don't want that kind of responsibility. And, 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 and when they told me, I said, Why did you not take it up? No, no, I'm just, just, you know, yeah, I just want to serve God in the ministry and all that. No, no, that is your ministry. If you're given the sphere of influence, you know, by default, you should take, unless God says no. If not, you take it. You take it and you reveal God there. Can I hear amen? Uh, so many a times, Christians are very apologetic. Very apologetic, you know, no, 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 I'm being humble, not being humble. No, 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 you be humble to be the Mao San Wang if God called you to be. If you're supposed to be the mountain king, be the king. That's the humblest thing to do, is to obey God. 
Amen? Some of you are to impact, some of you are to be. You are to be the king, you are to be the gatekeeper. Wow, wisdom, bonus, great grace be upon you. I want to encourage you to hear God and advance by faith. The rest of us who are, 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 are not yet at the place to be able to influence king or, or, or be kings, you know what? We are still to influence those mountains that we are now positioned in. Whether you are a seamstress or whether you are a, a shopkeeper, start where you are, reach out to your immediate sphere. Especially, you know, if you are an employee, reach out to your supervisors. That's where you start. Reach out to your boss, reach out to your colleagues. God is going to open doors for you to influence the, peop the, the people that He wants to influence through you. And who say a receptionist cannot influence a CEO? Pray, and God will open the door, and the day, the, I mean, when He gives you the opportunity, you will know it is, it is Him. I have had a privilege to to, to minister, I shared with you all right, um, end of last year in the Philippines to, to, to some very significant mountain kings. Significant. Significant. And, and, and they came to the faith, they got healed and all that. And, and, and you know, and, 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 and after that, they're expressing, not just expressing, they're already starting to do it. To start to, they started to sponsor our conferences and all that because they have the resource. They have the resource and they have the ability to, to get certain things done, you know. So, you know, love them like you would love someone who is down and out. They, they, they need Jesus just as much. Amen? And don't be intimidated. Oh, the person is too rich. Oh, the person is too powerful. Who am I? Oh, no, no, no. You've got the king of kings living in you. And the king wants to touch that life through you. And then I, I, I prayed for the Amma of one of these kings. <laughs> and Amma got healed. Got saved, got healed on the spot, stood up from the wheelchair, and now the king got saved because of that. And I, I can't mention name, you know, here. God can use you. God can use you. If, if Today, I'm going to pray for you. Are you ready? I want to pray with you and for you that God will reveal to you your realm and who are the ones that you must pray for, intercede for, touch and impact. Love them into, into the kingdom. Serve them into God's realm. I'm, I'm going to pray for you in a while. You know, you got, I want to encourage you to, to, to go to God together with me in prayer because, because ultimately, ultimately, this is the outcome. One last scripture and then we want to go, we're going to go into prayer. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 14. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. It will be filled. Right now, it's the outworking of that. And the outworking in that outworking, you have a role. I have a role. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. Do you know God really want to use you? You know? Or you might be a lawyer in a law firm and, and, and God wants you to start praying for the, for the partner. You know? And then one day, you, know, you bump to each other in the, in the, in the escalator and, and, and you, things can happen. God will start to open door for you to be able to bring His healing, His healing, His blessing to people around you. I want a, a musician to come. Can a musician come? I want us to take a moment, all right? I invite you to stand because I'm going to ask of you to close your eyes. I'm going to pray with you that the Holy Spirit will begin to reveal to you very practical things about your mountain, what you can do, simple acts that can reveal God's love and goodness in, you, in, your, in your realm, in your office place, to reveal, to, to reveal servanthood, to reveal love in such a way that the kingdom effect can start to find manifestation through you. God may just even give you a, a, a tremendous word of knowledge regarding your CEO. And through that, you know, you can really bring the kingdom's glory into his life. God can do anything. He's just looking for those who are willing, who are willing. Like I said just now, the mystery of the kingdom is not just revealed to every kingdom subject. Just as our state secret, it's not revealed to every citizen but it's revealed to those who are willing and positioned to do something about it for the state, for the kingdom. God will reveal to you secrets, not for you to gossip about, but for you to pray, for you to bring His kingdom reign and rule into very, very specific lives that God is targeting in your sphere right now, in your workplace, in your medical uh, 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 clinic, wherever, wherever you are now. I believe that the Holy Spirit has people He wants to touch through you. And this morning, let's give feed to our prayer. 
Let's give expression to the, to the revelation. Let us take a moment. Lord, Lord, we thank you th this day for your word. We thank you that you want to use us, Lord, to reveal your goodness, your love, your salvation, Lord, through our life, through the works of our hands, to the people all around us. Father, right now and in this moment, we pray that your Holy Spirit will speak to every heart here, that it will not just be another message on a Sunday, but it's a, it's a, it's a word from your heart to them, every single one of us here. People that you want to love into wholeness in our life and through our life. People you want us to pray into the kingdom. Would you reveal to them to us right now in Jesus' name? In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Speak to us, Lord. No, I have this picture of... Uh, it could be someone here. I have this picture of, um, of a, a kid, uh, a young child, like a... look like a five, six-year-old kid in a neighborhood. is in an HDB environment. And, and, and whoever you are, you, you, you've seen that kid and you felt compassion. You know about the problem in their household. And the, I think like something to do with the father. And you feel compassion that, to show love, but you have not done it yet. Can you come to speak to me after this service? I really believe God is speaking to you. They say, you know, you can touch that life. The family is ready. It's, it's crying out for my love to be revealed. And it's got to do with a child. I saw the child in the corridor, you know, and you saw and you feel a compassion. It's something about the family. I want us to just close our eyes for a moment. God wants to speak to you. God wants to use you. God wants to use you in your office. Someone here, you, you know you have a colleague that you, that you feel so burdened for, but you're too shy to share the gospel. But you know that she's struggling. There are issues in her life that, that is so hurting. Would you be bold? Would you be bold to initiate a conversation and share the gospel? People, the time is short. The kingdom is crashing in. The Lord is coming back. Let us, let us lay hold of every opportunity to reveal the kingdom. Father, speak to us by your Holy Spirit. Let us take ownership over this message. And, and would actually be a doer of the word, Lord. Father, we pray we pray that you will speak to us. You will reveal your kingdom glory through us, Lord. The heart of the King be revealed through our walk, our career, our work. Everywhere we are, Lord, even in our neighborhood, Lord, would you open our eyes to see needs that the King is wanting to meet and then you will use us. You will use us, Lord, we pray, to reveal your heartbeat in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let that which is shared this, this day, Father, soak into our hearts, Lord, and make a difference for the days to come. Let it take root, let it bear forth much fruits that delight you, Father, delight you, our King, our Master, our Savior, our Heavenly Father. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, help us. Help us not to be spectator Christian. Coming on a Sunday, hearing messages after messages without the intention to live out your likeness with our life in the workplace. Help us, Lord, to be a people who would live lives to reveal you to the world around us. We thank you for that, Father. Holy Spirit, you'll continue to speak to every one of us. Even after we leave today, you'll continue to reveal to us. For some of us, you may be wanting us to give an old schoolmate a call or a friend that we have lost touch with. But today, we also ask of you, Lord, to help us to become strategic, Lord. Over the mountains that we are operating in right now, that we must reach out to the King and pray for the King and be a blessing to the King and reveal to Him the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. 
And for some of us here, Father, who are called to be the king and the gatekeeper, I pray for great grace, wisdom, and boldness to move forward, Lord, to take up their position, Lord, of obedience unto you. I pray, Lord, for doors to be open, the path to be clear, to, for the ones in our midst that must come up to the summit place and say, I will reveal Jesus faithfully from this position. Lord, that you will open the door, clear the path for your people to come into the places of influence to reveal the goodness of the King. Thank you, Lord. We agree as a household of faith, Lord, that, that the kingdom shall be, shall be revealed through our life. Shall be revealed through our life. And the King shall be glorified through the works of our hands. We agree over this. In, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. And all of God's people shout, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. So let us worship Him. Come on.